Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. My friends, I have some very critical and urgent information that I need to share with the world. This is going to be an exclusive forecast that you are not going to hear anywhere else. Because we approach these things from an unbiased, apolitical perspective, paired with our very eclectic data collection methods, we are able to accurately forecast much better than a lot of the channels who are in the favor of the algorithm do, which is why they're always dead wrong and which is why most of the time we are fairly close to being bang on. One of the classic examples of this is the Cascades Academy video that went viral last month where he predicted that China was going to collapse in 29 days. I told you guys that was absolute rubbish and that there was no way in hell that that was going to happen. Nonetheless, Many YouTubers jumped on that bandwagon and started making similar videos. They're all silent now. We're going to tell you what is actually going to happen. Okay. Now I have some acquaintances within the emergency preparedness industry. In fact, I am the emergency preparedness industry in some respects. Um, and I also have some acquaintances from Russia and people who know people in Russia. And I can tell you a few things right now. The first thing that you need to know is that the United States government is buying potassium iodide tablets. They're buying this stuff in droves. I do not know why they're buying it. It could be that they're sending it to Europe, but I know that it's very hard to get your hands on this stuff right now because the government is scooping it up. And I know this because I'm very good friends with one of the primary distributors of that item. And I can tell you that it's being scooped up. Now, that's for the purpose of inhibiting the ingestion of radiation through the thyroid gland, preventing thyroid cancer in the instance of a nuclear or radiological event. There is a good chance that a lot of this stuff is being shipped to Europe. However, the United States could be hoarding it for themselves. And by themselves, I mean VIP government employees who are going to be integral to the continuity of government that needs to happen if the bombs start flying. Now, I'm not trying to panic people. I'm just telling you what I know. The government is buying up Thyrosafe. I don't know why. <clears throat> I do know that oftentimes, if you live around a nuclear power plant, this stuff will be freely distributed just in case of a nuclear emergency. Now, it's very likely, and I, I know for a fact, that Poland is currently distributing this to some of their emergency services. They are preparing for an incident. I'm guessing it's related to the Zaporozhia nuclear power plant situation, which is currently offline, the biggest power plant in Europe, which is frequently being shelled. Both sides are saying that the other side is shelling it. We're going to leave it at that. Of course, the specter of nuclear war is incredibly um, high right now. The risk of nuclear war is the highest it has ever been in history. One of the top uh, U.S. admirals has basically stated outright that this is no longer theoretical. Okay, we are at the highest point of nuclear alert that we've ever been before. They're never going to tell us what DEFCON level we're at because that is classified information. But rest assured, the United States is preparing for a limited nuclear exchange. Notice I did not say a full-on nuclear war. The United States is currently recalibrating its uh, military arsenal for a limited nuclear exchange because what is going to happen in seven days with this referendum is very important, actually, in the next four or five days. If these breakaway regions do decide to become a part of Russia, which is looking like they're going to. Now, I say everything in quotes. Some people think it's a sham referendum. Other people think that there's... People who you know, genuinely want to become a part and integrated into the Russian Federation. Regardless, chances are that's going to happen. A line is going to be formed in the sand. If attacks continue on those regions, it's going to mean a all-out declaration of war against Russia. Once that happens, the full force of the Russian military will attack Ukraine. Ukraine could potentially be laid to waste if this happens, if the gloves come off and they start targeting critical infrastructure and decision-making centers, it's going to look like an entirely different war. Now, when this happens, if and when this happens, NATO gets involved. They send Leopard tanks from Germany. They send Abrams tanks 
from the United States, downgraded ones, so they can't be reverse engineered if they are captured by the Russians. They're also going to send long-range HIMARS. They're going to send all the big toys. It's going to be a full-on war, okay, if, and I say if, Zelensky commits to crossing that line, which according to a video that he released two days ago where he spoke in fairly fluent English for the most part, um, he indicated in that video that he has a number of conditions for the Russians. And it's very important that people understand this. His, his conditions were as follows. He wants Russia to be punished. He wants embargoes to be put on Russia. Okay, He wants more sanctions to be put on Russia. He wants all of the borders returned, including Crimea. Okay, He wanted... Uh, what else did he want? There was a few other um, conditions. Oh, yeah, they want reparations. So like hundreds of billions of dollars in order to repair Ukraine. We all know that Russia is not going to go for one of those things, much less all of them. So the question is, is he going to cross that line? If he does cross that line, the Russians have a, a range of options. They will likely intensify the military conflict or they may just detonate a nuclear bomb with the hopes that it is going to act as a escalate, escalate to de-escalate strategy or tactic. This is the strategy in which you utilize a nuclear weapon with the hopes that people will back down after that because they're worried that you're going to detonate more. Now, the U.S. government has said that they will respond if, that they will actually get actively involved. This just came out in the last 72 hours. A uh, U.S. official had said, I can't remember who it was, if it was Blinken or, or one of the guys, but they had distinctly said that if you use a nuclear weapon in Ukraine, we will intervene. Once the United States intervenes in whatever way they do, maybe they'll use conventional weapons, maybe they'll just get involved, then Russia will be inclined to, of course, respond again. Do they use another nuclear weapon or do they maybe target a U.S. military base in Europe with one of their hypersonic missiles? We don't know. Uh, the, the range of options is, is uh, quite vast. It's not just a tit-for-tat nuclear escalation. They're preparing for a limited nuclear exchange. We're about to see, in my personal opinion, and it's very there's a distinct possibility that the use of low-yield tactical nuclear weapons becomes commonplace and normalized on the battlefield. Now, I hope it does not come to this, even though I think that the suffering won't be much different if you're using limit, uh, like low-yield tactical nuclear weapons. Uh, yes, these things are more destructive, but this war has already been destructive. Hundreds of thousands, millions of people displaced, hundreds of thousands of casualties, deaths. Um, so it can't, it's just the death by other means when it comes down to it. But of course, there's always the pos prospect of it escalating to mutually assured destruction, all-out war, even though some people don't think mutually assured destruction is likely, but that all-out global nuclear war is likely. Now, when this happens, of course, there's going to be a panic around the world. The markets are going to tank. Uh, everything is just going to turn chaotic. Um, and who and God only knows what sort of emergency powers are going to be enacted by various governments around the world who aren't even party to the conflict yet, but just want to get a handle on their own population. Now, th this is where we are at. Okay, people need to realize this. And this is the other piece of information I need to share with it from an acquaintance of mine, is that right now the Russians are calling home all their VIPs. Uh, they're calling back uh, a lot of people back to Russia due to concerns about uh, fake charges of espionage, uh, people being put into camps, literally people being detained, even if you are not, and I mean, this may be far out, but this is in anticipation of a complete breakdown of diplomatic relations. Apparently, the Russian consulates across the United States are bustling right now with people trying to, in fact, leave to go back to Russia, okay, because they are concerned. Now, what we're seeing in the media, we're seeing these lineups of cars and um, lineups of people trying to flee the country. Uh, honestly, I haven't actually seen, I haven't personally seen a real image of a long list of people trying to flee Russia. I see a lot of Getty stock photos showing what appears to be 
uh, these long processions of vehicles, but none of them are actually like if you actually read the fine print, they're from their other places or they're just generic images. Okay, so from what I hear coming out of there, this hysteria about people leaving the country is a little bit overblown as well. Uh, the draft dodging hysteria is a little bit overblown, but I'm sure there are people who are, you know, genuinely trying to flee the country. That would be the case in, in any uh, mass conscription that we would see. Uh, there is definitely people there who are preparing for an SHTF situation. People are stockpiling and people are, are prepping for, you know, things to get bad, for war to come to them. So... And people are actually being quite tight-lipped about everything right now. Even Russians who are not in the United States, I've noticed they're being very ambiguous or they're, uh, they're, they're not letting on their intentions about much. Um, probably a smart thing to do at this point and probably rightly concerned. And that is very concerning for me that even people in the so-called free world democracies, uh, Russians are, are keeping silent about their opinions about things. Uh, that's uh, that's very concerning. So that's what you need to know. Okay, and right now, if you look around, all you hear is crickets. In fact, in the media right now, you wouldn't even know there was. We were at the the pinnacle of uh, nuclear war tensions in the world. It appears like it's a non-issue. People are concerned with Mar-a-Lago and whatever other nonsense. Some guy lighting himself on fire over the climate or something. You know, I mean. It's almost as if there's three possibilities with that. Number one, they're trying to minimize panic. They're trying to, so that they can go and buy up all the prepping stuff before the shit really hits the fan. That they're trying to keep the population calm in time, release the panic. Oh, here's another thing. And I'll get back to the media in a second. But this is uh, the New York subway station. These things are popping up all over apparently. Now we first talked about the uh, New York PSA months ago. And we did our little commentary on it. Everybody did, of course, and it became very popular uh, to a meme in some cases. But they also have been putting these posters out of decontamination procedures. Why would you have decontamination procedures on a subway system? Just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Now, the Russian subway system is apparently nuclear proof. I don't think the same thing is the case for New York, but if there ever was a nuclear weapon a lot of people are going into the subways and a lot of people are going to see this so why is it that the government is stockpiling potassium iodide pills minimizing the risk of nuclear war in the media and posting these things all over the place i don't know but you know if i <laughs> if i was just taking that at face value you know i would think that we are very very close to the brink right now okay um so we're at we're basically at this position now where either both sides get their sovereignty along these agreed upon lines or we're, we're going to ratchet things up to thermonuclear war, whether that's limited or global and uh, the scope of it. I don't know. Uh, in terms of the media, the other possibility, the other possibilities with um, why the media is kind of minimizing the whole Russian thing. Obviously, it's just not getting the clicks it used to do, in spite of the fact that, you know, Russia just basically threatened to, to nuclear retaliate over the Zaporozhia thing and potential nuclear blackmail, yada, yada, yada. Um, people are just bored of it. And uh, the other possibility, like I said, is that they're going to, uh, they're just trying to minimize it. And then the, uh, the last possibility is that the reason why the U.S. media and even NATO media, to some extent, is not focusing on it is because they're planning on backing out. They're planning on secretly backing out of the room after these lines are drawn in the coming days after this referendum concludes and those territories are integrated into the Russian Federation and they're just going to quietly walk away. They're not going to send leopard tanks, not sending Abrams, they're not sending HIMARS, they're not sending any heavy equipment. They're just going to back away. That's a possibility because it's political season. And the last thing they need is World War III happening during political season. Or maybe not. It could, you know, because remember, sitting presidents uh, don't become lame ducks if there's a war going on. Now, I know this isn't a presidential election, but maybe the same logic follows for uh, the congressional stuff. I don't know. Anyways, right now, we are at the highest point of nuclear alert. I'm telling you 
that the top generals in the United States military are saying that we are at the highest level of nuclear alert. They're not going to say DEFCON. They're not going to use those classified terms. The U.S. government is buying Thyrosafe and the Russians are being called home. With respect to the protests going on there, this is another thing to keep in mind. The protests, based on the arrest numbers, if you go back and you do a Google search of Russian arrests from the time of the invasion, February 24th to like March, I think the highest uh, amount of arrests in one day was 4,300 people. Right now, the highest amount of arrests that we're seeing is 1,200 people. So I would presume then that either they're short-staffed in terms of their policing or these protests are just not as sizable as they were at the start of the war. Meaning that this stuff about, you know, uh, Putin is backed into a corner and, uh, you know, the regime is ready to collapse and all this stuff is just nonsense. Um, or it's just, it's heavily inflated for clicks because this is what people want to hear. Again, they're trying to minimize this. Guys, if the Russians bring in their, uh, the rest of their military and then their reservists and then a few months down the road, their conscripts, this war is not going to be good. Like you, It's going to be a very one-sided affair because the Russians have been fighting this war at a manpower disadvantage, three to one disadvantage, in fact, for many months, even though they've had technological superiority and air superiority to some extent. Uh, but, you know, I mean, that's debatable, but um, it's going to be a different conflict and people need to prepare for the targeting of critical infrastructure and decision-making centers. It's going to look different and it's likely going to look very ugly and it's going to be very sensational and, uh, and it should, as it should be because we're talking about human life and this is likely going to bring NATO into the fight and we are going to go into a full-on war economy, not just within Russia, but within the rest of the world. And that may be how they get us out of the recession that Jerome Powell now admits that we're in. So that's probably what's going to happen. Um, there's a lot of other uh, stories. I, I want to say that if you're from Europe and you're sending me messages about how things are going there, I do read all of those messages. I can't respond in depth to all of them, but trust me, I, I read them all. And some of these are very, very well written. And always at the end of each one of these messages, people are telling me whether you're from Norway, Finland, Romania, you're always saying English isn't my first language. These are some of the most well-written emails that, I've, that I ever read. And uh, they're never from people who have like, native English as their, as their uh, native language. So um, I would encourage you to check out SHTF School by Selco. He was a survivor of the, uh, the Balkan Wars, I believe. And he goes into great depth about what you know, a survival situation, a real survival situation in a war zone could look like after the breakdown of rule of law and, and mixed in with martial law and anarchy and all that stuff. Uh, very scary stuff. He has a course. I have no connection with him. I don't even know if it's a guy, to be honest, because I have attempted to reach out to these people who run that and uh, they've, they've been kind of dodgy. So I'm guessing it might just be some like consortium of people and they're calling themselves a guy. But regardless, it definitely is thought provoking and there's truth to what they're saying, even if it is fiction to some extent. Um, but getting off on a, on a tangent there, but people in Europe, uh, there are many people with their eyes open. They see what's coming and I, it would not be surprising to me if this was intentionally being minimized so not to drum up a panic because there's so much potential for political upheaval right now like in the uk how they're lowering taxes on the rich and and it's almost like they're trying to self-implode it's it's crazy uh some people you know who are, are diehard uh, free market uh, capitalists will say that oh well that's a good thing you know and that it's gonna have some trickle down effects okay maybe but a lot of people are not going to see it that way and even if you believe that's the case, making an announcement like that while gas prices are so high and going into the war winter is, uh, I, I can't understand how they would rationalize such a move. But what do I know? Uh, Navy Admiral Charles Richard, commander of U.S. Strategic Command, has said that this is no longer theoretical. Okay, We are at the, the height of a potential war. We have the Chechens Katerov, the president of Chechnya, saying that 
According to him, there will be good news from the zone of the special military operation in the Ukraine in the coming days. We're going to see some kind of surprise. Is he referring to the referendums? And the outcome of that referendum being, of course, that it's very likely, although not guaranteed, in Kyrgyzstan they're saying that they might vote the other way. And then, of course, we'll see if Russia dignifies that and, you know, rightfully withdraws from that region. Uh, it's doubtful, but it's possibility. But this Chechen guy, you know, loose lips sink ships. I'm sure he's not in Putin's good books for <laughs> constantly telling people that there's going to be a surprise, right? We have French firewood prices soaring 50% in the last two months. This is one of the downsides of a global war is that all that climate stuff goes out the window. Not only does everybody scramble back into things like coal and expensive overpriced oil, but now they're going to deforest whatever remains in Europe as well in the coming years ahead in order to stay warm. A Russian diplomat has blamed the U.S. for deliberately lowering the nuclear threshold. Now, apparently, ballistic missiles have been equipped aboard Trident 2 submarines, which have warheads reduced of reduced power and are supposed to be used in scenarios involving a limited use of nuclear weapons. Unfortunately, we don't have the late, great Peter Pry to break it all down for us. I, man, you know, I'm glad that we, we got him before he passed away and he was able to provide us some insights. You guys need to go back and watch those interviews that we did with Dr. Pry because, man, it's something scary about the stuff that he's saying and how it's all coming true. Go and check those out. I uh, reposted it last night. I only, do, I only will ever do a repost if it's very important. It's very pertinent to the current situation. Lavrov has stormed out of the UN. Maybe stormed is an aggressive word. Maybe just walked out of the UN meetings, the UN Security Council meeting, after he said his piece there, which is another indication that we're on the precipice of a complete breakdown of diplomatic relations between countries. And as you know, as the saying goes, when countries stop talking, they usually start fighting. Even Trump himself has warned of World War III He's done that before. Even the Swiss, the Swiss, are advising hospitals to please, can you draw down some of your power uh, consumption this winter? Think about it. The Swiss have one of the highest GDPs. I think what's going to happen with all this is we're going to realize that GDP is nonsense. Because unless you are a resource-based economy, unless you have the energy, the raw materials, and the labor to put it all together then you are not a true powerhouse. You are a retail-based economy who has a whole lot of debt, just like the Swiss and just like a lot of the G7 countries do. And we're going to see when the smoke all clears who the real holders of wealth are. Now, the Swiss got a lot of gold. A lot of it ain't theirs. A lot of it is just, you know, they, they refine it and all that stuff. But um, anyways, Europe is needs to prepare for an energy crisis a big time energy crisis and they need to prepare for deindustrialization. And I'm guessing that with the reduction in Russian oil exports to the collective West this year, we are going to see a massive spike in the price of oil because there's no way in hell Russia is going to dignify any sort of price caps for oil. So if I was a betting man and I'm not advising you to do anything financially because I'm not a financial advisor. This is not fiduciary advice, but I would say that oil is looking pretty promising right now because of the global fracturing, not the decoupling, the fracturing. Now, somebody sent me a message, as many people do from Europe, uh, talking about how many of the nuclear power plants have been shut down over the last few years to to be supposedly exchanged for renewable energy. Now, a part of me has speculated, and I leave this speculative stuff towards the end of the video, because I don't want to seem too kooky to people who might just turn in. And my views are all pretty rooted in empirical fact anyways. But this idea of the nuclear power plant shutting down, if I knew, if I was a world leader and I knew that in the future, there was an inevitable clash between global superpowers, well, the Achilles heel of a lot of these superpowers in a war would be the nuclear power plants as we are seeing in Zaporozhia right now. Because you're talking about potential nuclear incidents. Now, there is a potential, of course, for blowback with a nuclear power plant, depending on the proximity of the aggressor. 
to the plant in question. So this is why uh, there is a, it's a gamble for either side to target the Zaporozhia power plant because the wind could blow towards Poland or it could blow towards Russia. It depends on where the prevailing winds are flowing, I guess. But the thing is, maybe they were shutting these down in France and all these other places because they knew that this war was coming. Okay, something to think about. I'm not saying that that's the case. I'm just saying, you know, because I don't believe in this greenwashing stuff. I don't believe that the powers that be have any concern whatsoever for uh, making money off of or even just, uh, you know, doing things out of the goodness of their heart. And uh, if they wanted to, they would find a way to make nuclear, to greenwash nuclear. If they, they have the money to do that, they have the PR people to make nuclear eco-friendly seeming to the masses. But the fact that they didn't maybe makes me think that this was like a strategic move from a militaristic standpoint, but they just don't want to spook people with the reality. Anyways, uh, we also have some some um, stress and pressure on the global food system due to all the droughts and uh, the high input costs of agriculture and all that stuff. But we're going to save that for another day. My friends, please, please continue to prepare. There's a lot of compliant people walking around right now that have absolutely no idea it's like the twilight zone i feel like i'm uh who is the star of they live rodney roddy roddy piper <laughs> i feel like that sometimes and uh, i don't view that from like an elitist you know like i'm special and i i, I have some esoteric knowledge no it's just you know the normalcy bias is a real thing it's a real tried and true it's proven in many of the the top tier academic institutions it's one of the most studied things in social psychology human compliance and it is alive and well right now and i can tell you that all of the stuff that the, the atrocities that we talk about in world war ii will be committed again because people have not changed people have not changed my friends in fact uh, a lot of the people right now remember that most of the atrocities are committed in the name of good. They're all committed in the name. Everybody thinks that they're the righteous ones. Everybody thinks that they're doing, you know, God's work or whatever, you know, whatever you believe in mother nature's work, Gaia's work, whatever. Um, but anyways, my friends, you guys take care, keep on prepping. If you want to support the channel, Canadian preparedness.com to get all of your quality emergency preparedness products that will actually keep you alive if you get caught out in the storm and please share this video. Thank you. Canadian Prepper out.